British cycling legend Sir Dave Brailsford is famous for developing the marginal gains philosophy. The whole principle came from the idea that if you broke down everything you could think of that goes into riding a bike and then improved it by 1%, you'll get an exponential increase in performance when you put it all together again. Brailsford's philosophy was the single biggest thing that took British track cycling to win two gold medals at the 2004 Olympic Games, Great Britain's best performance in over 100 years, and then between 2012 and 2019 consecutively lead six British cyclists to win the Tour de France the most grueling sporting event in the world. This all got me thinking, one of the ways I can make marginal gains with my ADHD is to improve battery performance. No, not for myself, but my phone. You see, my whole phone is integrated to support me in my day-to-day -day life as a PhD student at Oxford University. Whether that's time blocking my day, completing focused Pomodoro sessions, or managing my to-do list, I just can't function without it. I have an iPhone 12 Pro Max 512 GB, which is two years old. It does everything for me. I'm not looking to upgrade it for at least another year until the iPhone 15 comes out, but I wanted to keep it at optimal performance, so I developed a strategy to help me go from 10 hours of battery life to 14 hours to last my whole study day from 5am till 9pm. In this video I'm going to share 30 tips to optimize your iPhone battery life with iOS 16.1 and get a full day of charge for university or work. I've split these strategies into three tiers, simple, intermediate and pro tips that apply to everyone no matter how much of a productivity bunny you are. If you stay till the end we'll go through some pro tips that will help you not only improve your battery life but your productivity too. Simple tips. Let's go through some of the low hanging fruits first that will help you incrementally increase your iPhone battery performance. Number one, use airplane mode whenever you're in low signal areas. Let's start from the top of the settings. If you're in an area with low cellular coverage, you want to make sure you're using airplane mode. That's because your battery will drain trying to search for a signal. Two, use Wi-Fi rather than data whenever possible. Having your Wi-Fi turned on drains your battery if you're not using it, but it's more power efficient than using your cellular data. And the reason is that Wi-Fi only has to travel a short distance, whereas a continuous cellular connection requires a lot of power to maintain the connection constantly with towers that are at a distance. Tip number three, turn off Bluetooth when you're not using it. Now this is a difficult one because we've all got Bluetooth accessories like AirPods and Apple Watches now, but it's important in incrementally improving your iPhone battery. Whenever you're not using your Bluetooth, just turn it off. I was always forgetting to do this, but it's something I've managed to fit in. Tip number four, turn 5G off. To make data more energy efficient and to limit battery depletion, you can switch your 5G and go in either standard mode or low data mode. This means that when you do have to use cellular data, it'll use less battery power. Low data mode is the most efficient option here as it limits both both video and FaceTime quality and pauses automatic updates and background tasks. It's what your iPhone goes into in low power mode. Tip number five, turn your personal hotspot off. This is a very easy mistake to make. I was leaving mine on with family sharing all the time, so anytime my wife wanted to use the internet she could connect to my cellular data, but keeping it on just drained my battery. So turn it on when you need to use it and don't forget to turn it back off after. Tip number six, disable haptic feedback. When the iPhone provides tactile sensations like vibrations, it uses Apple's Taptic engine chip to engage a physical motor. In iOS 16, there's haptic settings for both ring and silent mode, and there's also haptics for system control and interactions. If your iPhone's always on ring mode, then it's definitely worth turning these off to save battery power. Turn off AirDrop. In the general settings, you want to make sure AirDrop is turned off entirely. Even as a YouTuber who uses AirDrop all the time to transfer files, there's no need for me to have it constantly on in the background. You'll be able to save battery power by always keeping it off. We'll come back to the background app refresh later in the video. Number 8. Keep iPhone in dark mode. Since iOS 13, iPhones have had this dark mode feature. With an OLED screen like in the iPhone, there's relatively fewer pixels used whenever the background's black, so there's less battery power used by the screen. Personally, I think dark mode looks a lot better anyway, and it doesn't affect your sleep as much as there's limited blue light. You can choose to keep it always in dark mode or set dark mode to appear at certain times or automatically during sunset. I just keep it on always. Number 9. Turn auto brightness off and keep brightness lower. Having the phone in dark mode also goes well with reducing the iPhone's brightness. When you're indoors, you want to keep brightness at around 30-40% to 40 or below. You can set your iPhone in iOS 16 to stop adjusting the brightness automatically by turning off auto brightness. You'll be surprised even at only 30-40% or 40 brightness, you'll be able to use your screen with no problems outdoors. Tip number 10. Turn on auto lock and turn off rise to wake. Now there's one other thing we can do in display and brightness and that's turning on auto lock and turning off rise to wake. When the iPhone's in low power mode it auto locks after 30 seconds so that's a good place to be. When your iPhone displays off it's usually a small fraction of the usual power it's using so this will be sure to boost your battery performance. Turn off live or dynamic wallpapers. Now let's go back into settings and into the wallpaper tab. You want to avoid live or dynamic wallpapers and limit the use of widgets on your home screen. These tend to use a lot more battery power compared to what you're actually getting. I tend to use only two widgets on my home screen and that's because they provide 
high value in keeping me focused with ADHD. Turn on optimized battery health. Since iOS 13, iPhone introduced optimized battery charging, which is something you definitely want to turn on. It's an algorithm that learns from your daily battery usage to reduce the wear and tear on the battery and improve its lifespan by reducing the time it spends fully charged. The algorithm holds the battery at around 80% charge overnight until you're ready to wake up. It's also why you shouldn't keep the iPhone on charge at 100% for long periods of time as you risk overcharging the battery which reduces its life. 13. Turn off analytics. The next thing you want to do is disable device analytics shared with Apple. Whenever reports are uploaded to Apple, they use your battery power. So you want to turn off all analytics, including analytics from your phone, watch and iCloud, and all of them really. When the iPhone goes into low power mode, it automatically stops these reports. So it's better to just stop it altogether. Turn off automatic downloads in the App Store. This is something that's not available in low power mode, so it's best to just turn it off and update manually whenever you need to. You want to turn off all automatic downloads and updates. 15. Use Safari, not Google Chrome. Where possible, you want to make sure you're using iOS optimized apps to optimize battery efficiency. They're just far better integrated into the Apple ecosystem. Safari drains a lot less battery than Google Chrome comparatively, and it works a lot quicker and seamlessly with iOS 16. 16. Decrease your iPhone torch brightness. One of the marginal ways you can improve your battery performance is by turning down the brightness of the iPhone torch. It's a pretty small amount of battery drainage, but every little helps. The torch is also just as good in dark settings, but it'll mean you'll just use less battery. 17. Limit the use of widgets. Widgets are a pretty significant battery drain. They're constantly fetching data from the application and refreshing it constantly in the background to keep it up to date. So try to limit their use. Intermediate. These intermediate tips apply to people who are committed to enhancing the battery even at the risk of some usability. These take a little more time and you have to really audit your usage to really make small marginal gains in your battery life. You really want to stay till the end to see some even more pro tips. Number 1. Audit your background app refresh apps. One thing I realized was that it's crazy just how many apps run in the background when I'm using my iPhone. These are apps that you're really using and are just wasting your battery. You want to really go through all your apps and turn off as many as possible. Background app refresh is automatically turned off in low power mode, so try to minimize background apps as much as possible. Erase the network settings. Within general, you can also reset your iPhone's network settings, which was found a while ago to cause battery draining issues for some people. You'll lose all your saved Wi-Fi passwords, but it's a small price to pay if you don't know why your phone is draining too quickly. Using low power mode more often. Let's go into control center. If you haven't already, you want to make sure to add low power mode to control center so you don't have to click on settings every time you want to turn it on. Low power mode automatically turns off once you get to 80% charge, but I've gotten into the habit of turning it on straight away when I take the iPhone off the charger. It automatically stops background app refresh and just makes the iPhone far more power efficient, extending battery life. Stop Siri from always listening. Siri is a very helpful feature of iPhone, but after auditing my usage, I found that I only really use it when I'm driving and want to call family or friends hands-free. The problem with with Siri is it's always listening in the background for Hey Siri, which is just not very power efficient and drains battery. It's far better to turn this feature off and just hold the power button to use it when you need to. Restrict location service apps. Another way the iPhone drains your battery is by different apps accessing your location through GPS. Really audit what apps need to access your location and how frequently so you can improve your battery life. Turn on app privacy report. One other way to stay on top of your privacy is by turning on app privacy reports. When you go through these settings, you'll realize very quickly just how often your GPS location is accessed and by what apps. So it'll help you audit the apps that need to use your data and how frequently they access it. It'll help you make better decisions to save your battery life. Number seven, optimize your mail push settings. To save your battery even more, you can control how mail servers communicate with your iPhone. In the default settings, all servers except Gmail push data to your phone so you receive mail as soon as the mail servers receive them. But you can cut this down to save battery by selecting fetch at hourly intervals. So your phone communicates less frequently with a mail server rather than a constant connection. You can also do this every 15 minutes if you have important emails that you you need to respond to quickly. Place the iPhone face down when you're not using it. Whenever you receive notifications, the display turns on which uses battery power. A quick way to get around this is by turning the iPhone face down so notifications don't light up your screen. It'll also stop you from getting distracted. Number 9. Get into the habit of closing all your apps. Whenever apps are left on in the background, it encourages location services and app refresh to keep them updated. A good way to save battery is to get into the habit of closing all your apps after you use them. Number 10. Remove case during charging. Batteries tend to perform worse at the extremes of temperature. When you leave your phone to charge overnight, it's important to remove your phone case, especially if you notice your phone gets hot when it's on charge. This will keep your battery capacity higher for longer. Pro tips. Okay, so you stay till the end of this video, so we'll go through some pro tips that will not only improve your battery performance, but will improve your efficiency. Turn notifications off. We talked earlier about how notifications turn your screen on and use haptics whenever apps make contact with you. It's important to really audit all your notifications to A, improve your battery performance and B, keep you focused. 
Living with ADHD means your attention is worth a lot more than the common person. So anything to keep you focused is just going to make a world of difference. Throughout medical school, I turned off all phone notifications on social media and instant messaging apps, and it helped me excel. I'll definitely make a video on this soon. Number two, set up focus mode. If you think cutting down on notifications entirely is really hard, then you could try setting up focus mode. That way, whenever your phone is in focus mode, you'll only receive a notification summary at the end of your study session. You can also customize your home screen so you're only using the most important apps that are needed for work. Limiting notifications and the time the screen is on saves battery life. Number three, charge your phone the same time daily. Okay, so I made a video that you can check out on how I wake up at 5 a.m. every morning. The key thing is to charge your phone at roughly the same times daily so that the iPhone algorithm can optimize your battery life. If you're on an older iPhone like me, and if these tips included in this video don't get you till bedtime, then it might be worth leaving your phone on charge in the morning until you leave home. But the key thing is not to charge it too frequently and to never overcharge or drain the battery fully. In this video I shared with you 30 of my best tips to make small marginal improvements with your battery life. Saving battery life goes hand in hand with being more efficient. But it's not helpful if you're not doing productive things with your phone and spending your time productively living with ADHD. For more videos on how I stay on top of my ADHD whilst being an NHS doctor and a PhD student at Oxford University, please subscribe for more and let me know in the comments what topic you want me to talk about next. Till next time.